The next step of our process is we will need to compare our computer's hardware with that of the college's recommendation. So what I've done is I've created a spreadsheet here in Microsoft Excel to kind of help along with this process. So the very first thing I need to do is indicate the years that I have left in school. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to pretend that I'm an incoming second year and I have my second year that I need to complete, my third, my fourth, and my fifth year that I need to complete. So that's four years total that my computer will need to work. So I've indicated the value four here. So for my field of study, I'm going to change this to interior just for fun. So if I do that, I get a little error message here that pops up that talks about the cell or chart you're trying to change is on a protected sheet. So I'm going to unprotect the sheet so that I can make some changes. I'm going to do that by going to the review tab and choosing unprotect sheet. So now that it's unprotected, I can go in here and click this drop down and choose IAPD. And once I do that, all of the recommended values here should automatically update with IAPD's recommended specifications. Now over here where all the cells are yellow, this is where I need to input my own computer's hardware values. So going over here to the left side, the very first category, number one, says processor, so I need to look for processor. So I'm actually going to zoom in the spreadsheet a little bit. And I can see that I have a whole category here called processor. And I can see that it says Xeon, and I have two of them installed. So over here, the drop down is already set to Xeon. It wants to know how many cores that I have. According to this, I have eight cores. So I'll go ahead and specify the value eight in here. Speed, it says 2.8, but this one says 3.4. So over here, I have 2.4. So I just need to find the value 2.4 from my drop-down list. Over here where it says Turbo, um, let's see. It may not be listed here that it does have a Turbo feature. You may have to actually go out to Dell's website, log in with your service tag number, and locate the original purchase sheet, because usually the original purchase sheet will tell you if it has that Turbo feature. I do know that my computer does have that turbo feature, so I'm going to leave that value set to yes. And if you're not sure, you can probably just go ahead and just set it to yes. Most, If you purchase the recommended computer hardware, the recommended college computer specification hardware, then it is going to have the turbo feature enabled. The next one is system memory. So let's see if I can find... There's my memory modules down here. Let's see, the very first one is capacity, and let's see, does it tell me the total? It says that I have, this is in megabytes, so I'm just going to move the, let me go over here and see what it's looking for. It says it wants it in gigabytes. So if I move the decimal three places, so from here to here to here to here, that brings me to 52 gigabytes. So on this particular computer, there's 52. And as you can see here, there's not the value of 52 in the drop-down list. So I'll just pick something that comes close to it. So I'll choose 32. And then for the speed, I'm not 100% sure what the speed of this one is. I do know that this computer is pretty close to 7 to 8 years old. So if I had to guess on the speed, I'm going to guess it's probably that value there. All right, moving on to the video card. Let's see if we can find the video card in this list. I think it's on the next page. Adapter bus, communications, other devices. Here we go, the display. So it says I have an NVIDIA Quadro FX 5800. So going over here to video, I do have an NVIDIA Quadro. And here where it says capacity, it's referring to the amount of memory that's on your video card. And I do have 4 gigabytes of memory on this particular video card. Going over to the primary hard drive. So let's look for the hard drive. Here's all my local drives. So the primary hard drive capacity, it says that it's 512. 
If yours is just 500, I would just go ahead and pick 512 since that comes very close. The type of drive that, so that the primary drive is referring to your C drive, so that's this drive right here, the C drive. I happen to know that it's a solid state drive because I installed it. Moving on to the next category down here where it talks about secondary drive. So let's go down to secondary. So my secondary drive is actually this E right here. So my secondary drive is, it's roughly about one, one terabyte or 1024 gigabytes. And it too is also a solid state drive. So I do have a network interface controller and its speed, if you click this drop down, it does all of these. So I'm gonna just pick the highest one there. And I have my Ethernet cable. It's plugged in right now, obviously. And I do have a CD burner. Backup drive. I do have several backup drives, but I don't have them plugged in, so it's not shown here. There are two terabytes. They're mechanical, and they're 7200 RPM. So that's all correct. This is all correct. USB thumb drive. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a 256, but I do have a 64. I mean, if you have a 128, I mean, that should work too. That should be fine. I do have a 64. And unfortunately, I don't have any more warranty left on this computer because it's seven years old. So, and unfortunately, I am my own technical support for it because the warranty had expired. And I do have headsets, and I'm using the audio plugs. So both of those I am setting as that. So once you're done filling out the spreadsheet, you can proceed on to the next section.